Breaking news. Return Kano to Kenya caught others federal government. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us once again on the channel. We say a very big welcome to you. If you're joining us for the very first time, please do well to like, share and subscribe to our post. Now to all of our existing viewers, thank you for your support. Please do well to always give us a thumbs up on our posts as they come your way. Thank you and God bless you. Um, on today's report, we're bringing you one from the stables of Inamdekanu and um, the court has ordered the federal government to actually return Inamdekanu, um, the indigenous people of Biafra leader, back um, to Kenya. Well, we know that um, an appeal court actually discharged and acquitted Inamdekanu um, based on the issue of rend illegal rendition by the federal government. Um, but the president and the attorney general of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, in alliance with the National Security Council, actually has said that they would not release Inamdekanu, that he was only discharged, he wasn't acquitted. And according to them, they said that there were other charges pre-rendition and that um, Inam Dekanu actually has to face those trials, has to be arraigned for those charges pre-rendition. And we know that um, also the federal government even actually went as far as going to the Supreme Court to annul the judgment of uh, the appeal um, court. So, well, let's get into the details of um, today's report and see what it says. It says, a federal high court sitting in Umahia, the Abia state capital, has ordered the federal government to pay the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Inam the Kano, the sum of 500 million as damages following his illegal abduction and human rights abuse from Kenya. The court also ordered the federal government to return him to Kenya from where he was extradited to Nigeria on June 19, 2021. The court, which was presided by Justice E. N. Ayandike, insisted that the extradition of Kano from Kenya without recourse to the legal process was a flagrant abuse of his fundamental human rights. He held that the respondent failed to disprove the claims of the applicant that he was arrested, blindfolded, tortured, and chained to the ground for eight days in Kenya before his extradition to Nigeria. Kanu, through his special counsel, Aloy Ejimako, had approached the court challenging his extradition from Kenya on 19th of June 2021. Ejimako told the court that the suit is Swiss generis of a special class and was primarily aimed at redressing the infamous unlawful expulsion or extraordinary rendition of Kanu, which is a clear violation of his fundamental rights under Article 12.4 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, as well as Chapter 4 of the Nigerian Constitution. He said, in addition to the rendition, I am asking the court to redress the myriad violations that came with the rendition, such as the torture, the unlawful detention, and the denial of the right to fair hearing, which is required by law before anybody can be expelled from one country to the other. I'm also seeking to halt his prosecution and restore him to the status quo before his rendition on 19th of June, 2021. You will recall that on January 19, 2022, the High Court of Abia State decided that portion of, that portion of violation of Kano's fundamental rights that occurred in 2017. Even as I had made claims that bordered on rendition, the court declined jurisdiction on grounds that rendition being related to extradition lies within the exclusive jurisdiction of the Federal High Court. This is what informed my decision to initiate the suit before the Federal High Court. To be sure, the extraordinary rendition of Kano triggered myriad legal questions that cut across multiple jurisdictions in Nigeria and even triggered the international legal order to vote. In other words, the rendition has expanded the matter of Kano far beyond the realms of the Abuja trial and opened up new legal frontiers that must be ventilated to the hilt before other courts and tribunals within and without Nigeria. Thus, this very case before the Federal High Court in Humaya is one of such 
that is aimed at seeking a definitive judicial pronouncement on the constitutionality of the extraordinary rendition. The ones in the United Kingdom, Kenya, African Union, and the United Nations are in addition. I would like to seize this opportunity to express my profound appreciation to the highly competent and hard-working team of lawyers that I am leading in the prosecution of this complex suit. Special mention must be made of Barristers Patrick Agezie, Ifenyuma Nwogu, Tochuku Arubuonye, Franklin Amadi, Hoeto Uwazi, and Mandela who make Borogu. For ease of reference and avoidance of any doubt, the following are the specific reliefs that I requested in the suit. Speaking to journalists shortly after the judgment, a Jima court said that the judgment had shown that the court still remains the last hope for the common man. He called on the federal government to obey the court order and return Kanu to Kenya. Well, that is it. Um, on today's report, we see that the, um, the federal high court in Umayyad has actually now ordered the federal government not only to just release Inam the Kanu, but to also um, return him back to Kenya, saying that he was illegally abducted um, from Kenya to Nigeria in June 2022. We'd like to hear your comments and your thoughts. Please do well to drop your comments um, in the comment section. Um, we'd like to hear from you. We're going to take one or two comments, and we have this one saying Kanu will eventually be returned to Kenya, not even the UK. As far as the international law is concerned, Kanu was kidnapped from Kenya. There is no paperwork or document to prove that he was legally handed over to Nigeria. Malami is a huge disgrace to Nigeria. His patron is also a joker who has carried out an act of kidnapping for the second time against Britain as a sovereign country that uh, we see that um, this person is saying that um, malami is a huge disgrace to nigeria and that um, the international law um, will not allow them to actually just hold on to him since the court has actually given um, an order uh, we have another comment here that said nigerians should stay clear of ethnic and religious bigots and most especially illiterate during the 2023 presidential um, elections. Um, we see, let's take one more. Uh, we'll take the last comment before we go. And this one says, it is quite shocking that a so-called son does not even understand international law. The moral of the story is this, never employ quacks in very sensitive positions. Malami and Buhari will be charged for international kidnap and terrorism. Any Nigerian still doubting this should wait till May 2022 23 sorry malami has caused nigeria huge embarrassment in the international scene well um, that is all that we can take for um today's report um until we we'll come your way next time please do well to like share and subscribe to our post thank you very much and god bless you